Welcome back. Next up, a conversation with a writer and director who has some estimable experience in this film business. But this time around at the Sundance Film Festival, he comes with a film that is one of those that is fascinating to me because the performer at the center of this film well, it's nice when you get a role written for you based on your previous work, and that is exactly what has happened with a spellbinding performer at the center of this film. It's director Jim Strauss. The film is The Incredible Jessica James. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thanks Thank you for, for coming. Me. As I mentioned before we came on camera, I want to call this film The Incredible Jessica Williams, <laughs> but of course, that's the difference between reality and, and the fiction that you have created. Talk a little bit about the background of deciding to write this script and the inspiration for it. Well, it's funny. I was at Sundance two years ago with a film, People, Places, Things, and Jessica had a supporting part in it. And that film was such a, a pleasure to make uh, from s start to finish, but one of uh, the most fun things about it was Jessica's part in it for me. Working with her and then editing that footage, it was just, I would, I would just be happy whenever I was, or would watch her <laughs> on the screen. And I, t I told my editor, we need every minute. Uh, let's, we're not going to cut out nothing. anything <laughs> of hers. Every time she's on screen, it's gold. And I was doing some press for that movie here. And I sort of put the, uh, the idea into my own head, talking about her and how much I, uh, I loved her as a performer and just thought she was so gifted and uniquely talented and had such powerful charisma. I kept saying, I can't wait till someone makes a film for her or she's sort of at the center. And a after saying it again and again, I thought, wait, wait I can do that. I, I'm, that, I'm a <laughs> filmmaker. <laughs> Maybe I could do that. And I talked to her about this idea, and it developed pretty quickly. Uh, and luckily, I, I, I got halfway into writing it, and my kids said, are you 100% sure Jessica's going to do this? And I called Jessica up and I said, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm underway on this. Do, are you, are you, are you, do, you do you think you want to do this? And she said, well, I'll have to read the script. But and I said, fair. Uh, but luckily she But did. you'll really like it. Luckily she did want to do it. And uh, it's, yeah, it's great. Talk about the story and the storyline. Had you thought about this particular narrative prior to envisioning Jessica, or was it was did it all kind of come concurrently that that you knew this this playwright's story, uh, trying to make it as the phrase goes in New York in in a very 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 tough market? It, it, was that idea in your head before? deciding to put Jessica at the center of this particular screenplay? I, I wouldn't say exactly. Mm -hmm. It all sort of uh, came together at once. Uh, I, I, there were some disparate elements that were maybe floating around in my head, but re it really all centered around once I had the idea that what could I write for Jessica, everything sort of just grew out of that. And I love the world of, of uh, the, the film has to do with children's theater, uh, nonprofit children's theater, and the, the world of off-Broadway theater in general, and being on the margins of, uh, you know, trying to get a get a foot in that world, and right. um, you know, I just thought uh, Jessica would be a a, a great character to sort of. Um, see in that world of nonprofit children's theater, which I, you know, I thought, well, you really, it was like, what would be fun to see Jessica do? I'd like right. to see Jessica interacting with kids in right. like an improv type way. Well, that, okay, let's put that into the story. I'd like to see, I like stories about, uh, I like romantic comedies. I like, and I like stories about things not working out in a funny way. Right. And I, I thought, well, let's see Jessica go on some dates and right. the uh, awkwardness of that. And so, yeah, 
was really Jessica. Jessica led the, my mind through the whole thing. And in, in hearing you talk about just that moment, that germ of an idea to say, just take Jessica and put her with kids. It must be a wonderful feeling as, as a writer before you're even a filmmaker to be able to say, Okay, yeah, that's a hundred. That's o that's only going to be perfect because <laughs> Jessica with kids. Yeah, I actually I'm so great. I've yeah. seen her with kids uh, on segments in the Daily Show, and right. she, yeah. So I hadn't. I already knew kind of, and I talked to her a little bit, and she had some. Um, you know, this is very much a character. It's kind of like, what would I? Uh, well, what would be fun to see this? character embodied by Jessica do. Uh, but I did talk to Jessica a little bit and kind of tr try to get some information about her personality, her, her thoughts, feelings, inclinations, sort of uh, idiosyncrasies, and uh, work them in in subtle ways. Uh, and there always is that thing when you're not only writing for a specific performer, but also the fact that you've you've named the character her same name. Talk a little bit about sort of that process of do, do you kind of balance out, uh, do some sort of calculus about similarities and differences. Obviously, you, uh, you've written differences that are, are dramatic, but by the same token, you do have this accomplished, very charismatic, very talented performer that, ha that shares the name with your lead character. Yeah, well, I thought about a different name, and then I, uh, and I talked to her about it, and it was never really an issue. So like, this is a character. Strangely, I think of this uh, character as a hybrid of, you know, it's Jessica James. It's kind of a blend of our two names, uh, and it's interesting. Uh, I put a lot of myself into the character. Uh, and thinking about sort of my early days in New York and right. struggling to, sure. you know, the story, one of the part, big parts of the story is just how constant rejection is part of success. Uh, it's just failure is just, it is the flip side of success and it's something uh, you have to go through as an, as an artist, as a writer, as someone who wants to break into the world of, theater or writing or film, you just, you're going to face a lot of rejection. And then w when you do succeed, it's not going to be exactly how you think it will be. And it's just a constant struggle. Uh, but I thought, you know, Jessica, your name is so strong and it's so, and you are so beloved and powerful. Truly. I, I don't, I want to use Jessica, but I'm not, it's not going to be Jessica Williams. This is going to be a character, but hey. I like. I want your name, uh, and she was okay with it. And yeah, why uh, people love Jessica Williams, uh, and I thought, you know, why give her? Wh why call her Jenny? Absolutely. Good news, I failed again. <laughs> I'm closer to success, and of course, no place like New York, and I, it. it it occurs to me, that, and of course it's been a very powerful, lasting impression. I, I wasn't fortunate enough to uh, interview Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, in his last film, God's Pocket, uh, a couple of years ago, just before his tragic and untimely passing. But the, the success that, that he had in his film career and in his sort of pop art world is such that I think, and I felt like I got a window on that world of which you speak, whether it be as a, as a stage actor or as a playwright, that sort of thing, that uh, I, I really look forward to seeing this film to be able to kind of consume that world a little bit through this character and of course through your story. Talk a little bit about that as, as um, uh, the environment that you sort of chose to put this character into. Well, the, uh, you know, the, I love, off-Broadway theater. I love dialogue-driven dramas and comedies uh, on uh, the s stage. It was, I, I lived in New York for years and avoided them for a long time because I didn't know that world and it just seemed so 
expensive. A theater ticket is so expensive. Right. And I thought, well, I don't, I don't know what to see. <laughs> so I'm not going to see anything. I'll, I'll just go to movies. Uh, uh, but once I delved into I had a couple of actor friends who sort of tipped me off to good things to see. Once I entered the world, I realized, wow, this is unbelievable. This is magical. Right. And it's, it's unlike anything else when you see a great play. And it, and it doesn't last that long. It's just this thing that exists in this time and place. And right. I love that. It's a, a backdrop to the story. What Jessica, and that's, the, that, that's what she wants to enter. That's the world. That's what she wants to be part of. Right. The magic of, uh, of, of, that, of that world. And I think people who know it know how special it is. But what she's doing uh, on a daily basis is working with kids at this nonprofit theater organization, which is another thing that sort of I int that I discovered uh, when I started exploring theater. Um, there, there are a lot of nonprofits in New York that are dedicated to theater for children, and it's not. And I just am a, such a big believer in. There's this one organization in gen in in particular that I based. Uh, my story off of called the 52nd Theater Project, mm -hmm. and it takes these uh, kids from public from public school and Hell's Kitchen and uh, um, teaches them how to write and produce a show. And in doing that, I and there's a public performance at the end of e each semester. That's really cool. It's so cool, and you get to see uh, the show put on, and they don't they don't mess with the kids' words. Uh, it's the kid's voice Beautiful. on the stage, uh, and it's acted by professional New York actors. So you'll see like Billy Crudup and <laughs> Edie Falco doing these. Uh, That's amazing. 11 year olds plays and it yeah that really that was something and that's the world Jessica lives in and that's what she's mentoring these kids kind of helping them find a voice and it's not about necessarily becoming a playwright but just right. kind of learning that your voice is valid right and that, that your viewpoint is is a thing in the world yeah. yeah for sure Jim thank you so much let's talk about screenings obviously we want to get butts and seats to see this film well, we are the closing night film, Exciting. Friday. Huge deal. Friday at the Eccles. Very cool. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having Best me. Best wishes for a wonderful Sundance. I know, uh, unlike some of our newcomer friends, you've been around these parts a time or two, so you know the drill. But nevertheless, we wish you a wonderful festival. And uh, hopefully we won't get too terribly much snow. We can both make all of our appointments, eh? All right. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. The film is The Incredible Jessica James. The title character is played by The Incredible Jessica Williams. Jim Strauss is the writer and the director. Make sure to include it in your film watching plans. The closing night film at the 2017 Sundance Film Festival. We'll be right back.